No, no, I nearly killed my computer. Woo! Why am I wooing when I nearly killed my computer? <laughs> yeah, anyway, liquid metal, is it worth it? So if you want to upgrade from Windows Home to Windows Pro or just get insanely cheap Windows and Office 2016 keys, head on down to 0 and 9, links are in the description and I even have a discount code for you and they also have cheap gaming keys too. So if you have a laptop that runs hot, you can repaste it with just normal thermal paste and it will help cool down your system. But the ultimate in cooling down your system is obviously liquid metal and even better than that is liquid metal plus undervolting. If you can do those two things, you can get massive performance gains, like huge drops in temperature, the fans are quieter, just you're gonna get those gains. The thing about liquid metal is it's pretty risky because liquid metal is conductive. So if it leaks onto your PCB or even onto transistors, etc., it can short your computer and fry it, totally rendering your laptop useless. It can also destroy your heatsink as well. It does not like aluminium or aluminium, as some of you say. It'll eat that within hours. And I have the proof because I failed and I failed hard. But before I failed, I got some massive gains using liquid metal, like it was out of this world. So let's have a look at the damage I've done. So pretty much any laptop you can do this to. Most laptops, you just take off the bottom cover, you have a heat spreader there, you unscrew it, pop it off, repaste it, you're done. It really is that simple. Now what I've done is I took off the heat spreader and have a look at this damage. Have a look. It is eaten through the copper coating. Now I knew if this heat sink was not copper that it would eat through it. And I scratched it, but I mustn't have scratched deep enough because it looked copper when I scratched it, but still it ate through that coating no problem. So make sure if you are gonna test if your heat sink is indeed copper, scratch really deep. Because I made the mistake of not scratching deep enough and this was not copper, it was just a coating. And you can see it's just eaten through that coating. It's obviously made out of aluminium and that's only a couple of hours. If I would have left it there, if I didn't have the problems I'll tell you about later with the transistors overheating the GPU, I would not have known I would have left it there and it would have ate my heatsink. That's the first thing you've got to check for, is your heatsink copper. If it's copper, you could probably still do it. If you have a GPU though, there's a good chance you'll have transistors on the GPU. And you can take the risk of just putting liquid metal on and not conformal coating over those transistors. But if it leaks, it can short your computer out, as I said before. So I covered those transistors with conformal coating and it was a big mistake. Now I knew that conformal coating can act as an insulator, but I got the right one and I was hoping it wouldn't, but it did. The GPU temp just went way out of whack. Like we're talking, now we're getting into the 90s and it would just crash in Premiere when I would render. It just The GPU was just unusable. It's just because I put too much conformal coding over those transistors because I didn't feel safe not putting it there. But at the end of the day, when I took it off after checking, I saw that the heatsink was not copper either. So obviously in liquid metal, I can't do it with this laptop. But when I did do it and I ran the CPU, it went from the low 70s to the low 50s under load. And that was with the fan running really low. You could not even hear the fan. You would not even know this laptop was under load. Okay, so this is running flat stick 100%. Listen for the fans. I'm amazed. I'm actually amazed because I heard this thing. 56 degrees. And the fans are on so low, like they're on low, like idle fan temperatures. It's the quietest now. laptop I mean, I've heard. Yeah. On running on 100%. Yeah, this is running flat stick and you can't even hear the fans. I had to ask him, seriously, <laughs> is this running 100%? And I had a look and it is, and it is super quiet. Yeah, you can't even hear that fan. Like, okay, we haven't got a, we, you know, we've got a four degree difference, but the fans are running so low now, yeah. it's incredible. Now, repasting with good quality, just thermal paste, I could get around the mid to high 50s. So the temperature wasn't that much more than liquid metal, but the difference was the fans were running faster and, of course, were a lot louder. Is it worth liquid metal in your laptop? And I'd say it is if you have a copper heatsink 
and you don't conform or coat your GPU transistors if they have it, it is worth it. You're gonna get much better performance, you're gonna get 20 degrees off, and the fans are just gonna run so slow, it's gonna be so quiet, it's just awesome. But there is that risk involved, and it will still eat copper heat sinks over time. So at the end of the day, for me, I wouldn't try this on a $4,000 XPS 15 or a MacBook Pro or Zenbook or Aero or anything like that. I just used the Xiaomi Notebook Pro. I used that as an experiment. I wouldn't do it on a two, three, four thousand dollar computer. Just normal thermal paste, repasting is good enough. It's simple to do. And I still drop temperatures by around 15 degrees. So I think that's the safest route. Of course, it is up to you how much risk you want to take. But um, for me, I'm happy with how it is now. And I probably will do it on an XPS 15. But definitely, I will not be doing liquid metal. So anyway... I failed. I failed hard. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new around here, please subscribe. I've got a lot of good content down the track. And until next time, guys, tally ho. All right, all right, all right. Kid you not. We're under full load here. 54 degrees, 52 degrees, full load. 100%. What's the CPO? We can tell here. We're going at 2.2, which is pretty much stock uh, 15 watt 54 it's staying in the low 50s where before it would go to 58 so okay so now we're at basically 3 gigahertz we have 30 watts going into it it is 91 92 93 degrees so it's pretty much on a limit there but the thing is the fans aren't on full they're just like how it was before when it was running 100%. The fans are nowhere near flat stick. So if the fans could go up more, um, could increase their speed, I reckon we could get that temperature below 90 degrees and it wouldn't throttle. Um, well, it's not throttling anyway, but still 90. It's getting up into the 90s. But that's double. Yeah, that's double what's well, power. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's only a 15 yeah, watt chip. 15 watt chip, we're putting 30 watts into it. If I could undervolt this, mate, it would do 45 watts, I reckon. If I can undervolt it by 100 millivolts. But why isn't the fans coming on so much? The fans should be kicking in harder. To, oh, here we go. We've got a bit of a throttle there. 4% throttle must have peaked at 100 there. Let's have a look. 98, no, it's it, it still had, oh no, it's hit 100 there, hit 100 there. It's hit the big ton, 